Did Maria blow it? It sure feels like it. Welcome to Playing the Field, a Bachelor podcast. So much to talk about. Hometowns are in the books. And joining me now to discuss a wacky and wild and very emotional week eight episode of The Bachelor are our Bachelor insiders, Jen Matarese from here at WABC in New York, Gina Sirico joining us out in Los Angeles from our sister station, KABC, and I, of course, am Ryan Field, the Eyewitness News sports anchor slash huge Bachelor fan. And coming up also on this episode, a very, very important interview with the man himself, Jesse Palmer, the host of The Bachelor, who divulged a lot during our time with him, and we're excited to uh, bring that to you as well. But first, ladies, first impressions of what we witnessed uh, on Monday, Episode 8, Hometowns, in the books, a lot to digest, Jen. I think Maria blew it the episode before, and she couldn't recover. Agreed. That's my, my take on that. I don't think there was any coming back from that, and I think... I think he knew that, but you know, we can get to that when we get to to. her date, but that's my overall thoughts on that. Gina, your assessment. I agree. I feel like, you know, Joey has said it over and over again throughout the season. He needs to feel confident in the relationship and she gave him pause, you know, saying she couldn't, she didn't know that whether she could stay there and then later, you know, later on in this date, which we'll get to, but, I, I just don't think he felt confident. And Gina, we know she is the Bachelor Insider because she is currently outside the Bachelor Mansion <laughs> as her backdrop on Zoom. It is my home now. We I very much you know appreciate that. that. <laughs> we're, very, we're getting like the inside scoop, if you will, mm-hmm. from Gina, which is good. So listen, we, we started with a record 32 women. Now we're down to the final three. It's it's kind of been a whirlwind as, as we've gone through this season, eight episodes in. Uh, hometowns is something that's always a big deal as they get to bring The Bachelor back to meet their family. Uh, and it's it's obviously an emotional episode because I feel like each woman this season is dealing with some sort of emotional uh, issue, whether it's from a past relationship, whether it's something from a family member, uh, whether it's their own feelings towards Joey and Kelsey. He brought she brought Joey to New Orleans and. There was a lot to unpack from this in terms of uh, she talked about seeing the butterflies with her mom and uh, she sits down with Joey and once again gets emotional talking about her mom. And and it's really we've basically every time they've had one on one time, we've seen her get emotional talking about the passing of her mother. And just for clarity, let's go ahead and play you a clip here from this episode. Oh, how are you doing? Um, Yeah, I feel like it is hard. Like, I obviously wish that, that she could meet you. I think that she would love you. I think that she would ask you some difficult questions mm-hmm. that need to be asked. But yeah, no, I miss her a lot. I miss her in moments where it's like, it just feels like she should be. And Jen, you know, this is something that's still very much on the forefront of her mind and, and understandably so. I think it's just, it, it can't not be, you know? I mean, it's her mom. Uh, you're bringing your possible soon-to-be fiancé home, and of course she's going to wish that she could be there for that. You know, it's. Um, I think Joey did a good job asking her how she was doing, how she was feeling, and, and listening to her. Absolutely. Um, I will just say on a personal note, I cried through most of her date. Um, I've been where she is. I lost my mom, then lost my dad. And so the emotions there, they don't go away no matter how much you, you know, how, no matter how long it is and no matter how, you know, hard you try and suppress them. Um, so for me, like just watching it, it really just, it hit home and my heart goes out to her. Um, and yeah, I get it. She's looking for signs. What could come next for her is huge and life changing. Um, so of course having the love and knowing that her mom is there in spirit, I feel like that was important to her. And I think that, you know, getting Joey to fit in with her family and have that connection with her dad, who's so important to her right now, it's key. Yeah. And Joey met her brother, her sister and her dad. And I think we can all agree that I, I felt that Joey got along with her family and it felt more comfortable uh, with the four families that he met. He he felt right at home, if you will, being there with Kelsey's family and seeing a lot of the um, comments after this episode. Uh, people are feeling the same way, and there's a lot of talk about maybe Kelsey's dad being the new <laughs> golden bachelor, and wouldn't that be a, a twist in that. all of this? I would love to see that. That Right? Sign me right? Up. Sign <laughs> up. Oh, Gina's there. He's, he's a cute dad. <laughs> 
<laughs> no, he's. Oh no, I meant not sign me up. Ah, sign come on, Gina. Oh, Gina. that's what I thought you meant too. <laughs> I was like, sure, you might be a little young for that, dad. but go for it, girl. <laughs> Just God, just promise that. we get the exclusive interview on this podcast when that goes down. <laughs> if if any of you guys end up on this show in any capacity, you owe it to the podcast. <laughs> uh, let's get Never those rumors started right now. Let's do it. <laughs> oh, but how great was that photo album that they looked through? Yeah. That was so special. It was... Uh, Seeing her mother. Yeah. I mean, it, it touched on all the... It pulled on all the heartstrings, mm-hmm. as Gina said. And I, I really felt like it took their uh, connection to an even deeper level. Um, and I think he's at a point with her where I think we can all agree that she just might win this whole darn thing and that she might be the one there at the end. Yes, absolutely. She's she's a contender. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, um, as we were talking about earlier, you know, with her looking for the butterflies and the sign that her mom was there, I think that when you go into something life changing and huge like this, you will always be looking for signs, Mm -hmm. signs that you're doing the right thing, that you're on the right path. And the butterflies were there literally and figuratively for both of them. And I do feel like they both got the signs that they needed that they're on the right path. So Joey leaves New Orleans, then goes to Rachel's hometown of Rancho Cucamonga, California, uh, a beautiful part of the country, uh, had those California blue skies throughout the date, uh, and they have a pig roast in the backyard, meets the family, and and the family right from the jump is very skeptical of this process. The dad admits, uh, her dad admits he's never seen the show and is still (laughs) kind of learning a lot about this uh, process, if you will. And for me, the elephant in the room is both her family uh, and kind of Rachel herself hint at this really bad breakup that she had, which kind of brought her onto The Bachelor to find love. We really don't know what happened. Jen, you said she alluded to being engaged. She was almost engaged, I guess. She was on the precipice of being engaged and then it all fell apart somehow. We don't know. I, I don't recall hearing what it was maybe it's out there on the internet somewhere we can find what happened in her past relationship but i i don't think they said and i think uh i don't know it obviously affected her family as well as her not just her i mean it, it was like a whole family went through this breakup and they were telling her gina to protect your heart and just making sure that you know they don't want to see her obviously get crushed again like she had apparently in this previous relationship it felt like awful foreshadowing to me mm-hmm. because yeah. all we kept saying, all they kept saying was guard your heart. We want to make sure you're okay. Guard your heart, protect your heart. And I'm like, Oh God, this, it doesn't as, as much as now in this date, I saw the connection a, mm-hmm. lo- a lot more than I have throughout the entire season. Um, I was like, Oh man, this thing, this is not going to be good. It's not going to be good for her. I feel like the right, the, they put the writing on the wall here. Am I wrong in thinking that sometimes there's something to be said for keeping it positive on these hometown dates? Because I feel like Joey can leave with a more positive feeling about everything overall and he's set at ease. But if if it's like hammering at him about a breakup or are you going to hurt our daughter? It's like more in his head that way. I don't know. Yeah, I would agree, especially coming from a guy's perspective. That's what I'm wondering. When when you go into your quote unquote girlfriend's family's living room or backyard, if you will, like you want to feel welcomed and kind of with open arms not with like the raised eyebrows like who is this dude is he going to be the next guy to hurt my daughter like you know you don't want to hear that as a guy but obviously given what she's gone through uh there's certainly a reason why her family is acting like that including her sister being very protective of her but there was one point in the episode where rachel tells her dad that she's falling for joey and let's go ahead and play that for you right now and you know you always have us mm-hmm. I, I do see a future with him surprisingly and I think that's why I'm also very emotional because yeah. it's happening so fast but mm-hmm. you know I, I feel very happy with him I haven't been as happy in a while and I feel safe which is a big thing especially like with my past mm. I am honey I, words can't express how I feel about you you know how I feel about you and your sister yeah. and it's nothing's gonna ever change that you are the number one man in my life so your, <laughs> your opinion means like everything to me. Gosh, don't <laughs> make me cease. <laughs> With that said. <laughs> so what did you make of that clip, Jen? 
It was so special. I mean, it was so nice that she could express to her father like how she was feeling, where she was at in this process, why Joey's important to her, but also that she really respects her family. She wanted them to know that. And, you know, she's told her dad he was their number one guy. And it just brought the tears. It was just like, you know, I was like, oh, look at him giving Joey the side eye the whole time. (laughs) And then when he had those tears, I was like, oh, he loves her so much. You know, it's like you just fall in love with her dad then you know you can't help it yeah and he's being a protective dad gina Mm -hmm. and i'm guessing you were crying through this date as well (laughs) the father-daughter relationships throughout this entire episode yeah had me they they got me they got me appreciate that thanks bachelor Bachelor producers. really (laughs) i'm sure you're not the only one saying that i know (laughs) i know no i know that and i think that is also the reason why they do it these women I love all this final four. I love these women. They're great. And I, you know, seeing their families and seeing the relationships they had with their families really just kind of added to my admiration for them. I really, you know, they're all very dynamic women to begin with and their families are just, they're amazing. They're all great. And I think it just kind of adds to the genuineness of this season, right? We talk about how good of a guy Joey is. So down to earth, he's relatable and all four of these women, frankly, that were left uh, are in it to win it. And, in, in a sense that they're in it to find love and they're in it for the right reasons and they come from good families. And I just feel like it just kind of, the whole season just feels very wholesome. It does. At this part, it does. It does. I was like, how is he going to choose? Everyone's family is wonderful. Yeah. Like there was no crazy drama really. I mean, it was, they were nice people. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I mean, and for this, let's just also say like, Rachel's family did make him feel very welcomed. Um, yeah. I think the parts that we saw were the parts where they of were course. telling her to guard her heart and all of that mm-hmm. and to just kind of side eye. But, you know, like you watched him, I think with her nephew, he was so cute, you know, so playing cute. with the kids and like just enjoying himself and really immersing himself in the culture of her family, her multiculture mm-hmm. that she is, that is so important to her. Um, she made sure that, you know, he showed her mom respect with a f- specific Filipino greeting. She, you know, she made sure that he fit in and he did. And I think they really did like him. I, But they, of course, they love their daughter and they want to make sure that she's OK. Yeah. They and I think to your point, Gina, we saw Joey's connection with Rachel uh, kind of come to the forefront and maybe we understand now why that she was one of the final four where a lot of people <clears throat> myself uh, thought <laughs> it should have been Jen in the final four mm-hmm. but you see now that he really does care for Rachel and this whole experience has obviously now taken their relationship to another level and speaking of wholesome he goes to <laughs> Becker Minnesota arguably the most wholesome place in the entire U.S. of A. They go to a Christmas tree farm right in Daisy's backyard, and it's it's owned by her family, this Christmas tree Used farm. Used to be, yeah. Used they, to be, I think yeah. they Used sold be, yeah. it or something. Yeah, yeah, but that's where she grew up. It's where she grew up. They have a cup of hot cocoa, all the wholesome things, so and then she cute. has this uh, impromptu conversation with her friends where she basically tells them how much Joey means to her and their relationship thus far. I'm really happy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I need to tell you guys... Um, I feel like I've talked to all of you about it, how I was like, with like all my past stuff and then with getting my cochlear implant, I was always like, what like person like would want to be with me because of this? Because like it makes me like a little different, you know? And it was kind of always just in the back of my head. But like this whole experience has honestly changed my perspective and my outlook on life. And that's like completely because of him and how he's like looked at me and treated me. And even if it's not, us like at the end which I hope it is like I'm gonna like have that forever and like I know like what I deserve and I'm just I'm I'm really happy so this is uh this was cool having friends kind of be involved in this as opposed to family members which we're used to yeah I mean we got to see what her life is like a little bit more almost because we got to see her friend group I think he fit in well with them and then you know also her family later on that day I mean it was just really great to see all that and that he enjoyed his time with them they felt like a, I mean, from the start, Joey and Daisy have felt like a Hallmark movie. And <laughs> yeah. this really kind of like hit it home. Like it was, I think Hallmark writers are, you know, like <laughs> the Christmas, you know, those Christmas movies, they're yes. writing this, they're writing it all down. They took notes watching this, this 
this particular date. Um, they were so cute and they do just seem very at ease with each other and comfortable with each other. And he did fit right in. And I thought it was interesting that she basically said in so many words that she needed her family's approval to kind of justify how she was feeling. And it's almost like once she found out that her family was kind of on board with this idea of this relationship with her and Joey and maybe a future with the two of them, then all of a sudden she's like, I'm falling for you. I'm falling in love with you. And it's almost like she needed that validation, if you will, from her family to really bring her feelings to the forefront. Yeah, her dad, oh my gosh, he's wonderful. And he's he was like a real friend to her in that moment. You know, he's like, just shoot your shot. That was you know? Great. I and love that. I loved it because you know, he doesn't want to see his daughter miss out on love if all it's gonna take is for her to just put herself out there because he knows how wonderful she is. Absolutely. Absolutely. I, I loved the, again, father daughter, the mm -hmm. father-daughter bond is like it was like the theme of this whole <laughs> this whole episode. Um, Daisy's family, obviously, as we know, you know, saw her through her hardest times and have gotten her through to where she is today. So it's understandable that she would want to have them, uh, you know, approve of and be OK and on board with what's going to come next. If that is a, you know, fiance with Joe, you know, being a fiance to Joey. Um, so it was really great. One other moment that I think in this date was key and that we should talk about for like a quick second is when she after she came in and she was talking and her brother said something and she said oh my god I hear him like I hear his actual voice um it was one of those moments that like mm -hmm. it took me by I think it took everybody by surprise in the room and then it took me by surprise as a viewer I was watching and I got I got chills it was it was really sweet because it brought you back to really the very difficult things that she went through health wise. Sure. Um, and, you know, it was really life changing. And I thought that was such a sweet moment. And I was glad that they left it in number one to, you know, let us experience it. And I'm glad that Joey experienced it too. Um, and the whole family as well. It was just one of those moments like on her path forward that I thought was so sweet. Another moment is the grandpa, her grandpa. Oh my goodness. And, Joey says, oh, I'm in trouble. And he goes, no, you're blessed about about Daisy. So, you know, kudos to him for stepping in on that. But he's so sweet. And everyone's like, we must protect the her grandpa. <laughs> <laughs> At I mean, all costs. Yes. yes. He's so great. And that's what I mean. Like, he comes to Becker, Minnesota, and everything just feels like home. And it's so it was know, homey. wholesome and genuine. And, you know, hearing her brother's voice and that kind of, to your point, Gina, puts into perspective all the struggles that she's gone through with her hearing. And, you know, she finally comes to the surface with her feelings. And I think that meant a lot to Joey. Although I will say, and before we get to the final date, I think he's done a great job with, like, his poker face. Like, he's kind of told <laughs> all of these women – the same yeah. thing that, you know, I'm so I'm falling for not falling for you, but like I can certainly um, I'm, see I'm a starting, future. Yeah. See a future. Thank you. That's the word I was looking for. <laughs> certainly see a future <laughs> with you as they're like portraying their feelings to him. And it's making it really hard to decipher. Not that I don't think he's being genuine because we know that he is. But I think it's making it very hard to decipher where his heart truly is at because he's telling a lot of these women the same thing. Not that he doesn't mean it. I definitely think he does. But it's hard to really get a sense of where he's they're on the same level point. like yeah. he's it's kind of an even playing field with w when we get to the top three you yeah. know i th i think yeah, and I also um i forgot what i was gonna say but well, listen they all they all bring something to the <laughs> oh, table right gina and that's why they're all kind of uh yes. to jen's point uh kind of neck and neck here as we go down the stretch they're all so different. We've talked about this before. They're all so different in um, their life experiences and kind of what they would bring to the relationship with Joey. And so that's what, and, but it, none of them are bad. It's all good things. So that's why like when we're watching, it's hard to decide like, okay, which one is the best for Joey? But ultimately he has said, as you know, we've talked about here, you know, for him, it's just who the best person is for him. And yeah. that's going to be, it's a tough decision because I don't know how he's going to choose. Yeah. Well, if you see great. a future with each one of these women, yeah. which life do you want? You know, sure. how do you see your life going? Right. Where do you want to live? Like all those questions. 
Um, you know, they'll get to that in the fantasy suites, I'm sure. Like they spend a lot of time talking among other things. Amongst Absolutely. other things, <laughs> yes. Glad we uh, <laughs> mentioned that small disclaimer there about the fantasy suite. And listen, I thought he could see a future with Maria. Oh. And I feel like I feel like the more I talk to people about this, which I feel like I talk to people more about The Bachelor than the Knicks and the Rangers here in New York, which I'm not <laughs> sure what that says about uh, where my head is at these days. But listen, it's one of those things that I feel like I'm in the minority because I really like Maria. And I, I thought like they had a fun vibe between the two of them. And we talked about this right at the beginning of the episode. She messed up in episode seven because she didn't tell him truly how she was feeling. And then when she says goodbye to him in this hometown date, once again, she has the chance to do that and doesn't do it. But during that hometown date, we get to meet her family and her dad, who is quite the character. Looks like he belongs in some uh, 90s Goo Goo Dolls or some sort of <laughs> keyboardist uh, for the Ramones or something. I don't know. He's just got this definite vibe about him. But, uh, you know, at first you're kind of like wondering where he's at, but then he kind of becomes likable towards the end of this, especially with what he tells Joey when they sit down with each other. The way I seen Maria tonight, I haven't seen her that way with anybody. And I tell you that honestly. So if she chooses you and you choose her, mm-hmm. it's because it's both. It's two-way street. Two-way here. street. So if I know you're the guy that she chose, and I respect her decision, I would have no problems giving you my blessings. And you become more to me than a son. Mm-hmm. Because the woman that you chose is my life. Mm -hmm. Take care of her, respect her, and we're gonna have a one big fat Greek Italian wedding Mm -hmm. and have you part of this family. And I thought that was kind of a big moment because when he's sitting there at the dinner table, he's like, I'll be the one to tell you if I like this guy or not. And if he doesn't look out. <laughs> kind of like Godfather vibes, you yes. know what I mean? But then he's like, I'll, you, once you become part of the family, you're more than just a son to me. And all of a sudden it was like a different Godfather vibe. And uh, listen, I, I thought that that was like a, a, a cool a turn of events in terms of our perceptions of her dad. And I thought once that conversation took place, and he told her, um, what did what did he tell Maria? And she's like, I don't think you were supposed to tell me that. that he was, oh, that he got the blessing. Yeah, the blessing. Mm-hmm. So he gave right. Joey the blessing. So yeah. once again, that should tell Maria that, okay, he, he's, he cares about me so much that he's basically asking my dad for my hand in marriage. And then she still couldn't tell him. <sighs> I was so frustrated in that moment. I'm like, this is your chance. Yes. If you're going to say it, you have to say it now. Or he's going to go back to when he gets to the rose ceremony and he's going in with more uncertainty. And if he's certain with the other ones, bye bye, you know? (laughs) Yeah. And I I don't know, Gina. I mean, it, it seems to me that if she truly felt the way that he did, that was her chance to say something. And maybe her silence, uh, spoke volumes, if you will. Absolutely. You know, to me, I was the same way. I was really conflicted about this date because I really wanted her to be able to express herself. And like Jen said, you know, once, she once uh, Joey told her that her father was like, yeah, I'm I'm in and you have the blessing and it's OK. That was like the absolute open door while they're sitting there watching, you know, the home movies of her as a yes. kid. Yes. You know, it would have been so perfect sweet. for her to blurt out. Oh, my God, I love you. This could be our family, you know, in five years or whatever. Mm-hmm. It would have been so perfect, but she couldn't. And I feel like this has been the issue I've had with Maria. I love her as a person. I think she's wonderful. And I hope that when men t- or women tell all tapes, I get the chance to speak to her. I really do. But the thing about her is I feel like she, um, she definitely hides and masks her feelings. You know, she is bubbly, but like, doesn't get, we don't get to the surface. Um, and I think that there's so much there but we never get we never get to see it. And Joey mentioned it even in the beginning when they were on the on the um, in Niagara Falls and they were on the boat. You know, he said, you know, when she said that she never brought anybody home, his note was that, you know, I can't believe that she never brought any home and she's never let anybody see this side of her because she was being vulnerable and she never let anyone see that. And it's a way it's a it's a protection mechanism of course to make sure she doesn't get hurt but it was so obvious that you know that that's what she was doing it felt to me like instead of them wearing on ponchos on that on that boat she should have been just draped in a red flag (laughs) it was like 
I felt that. I mean, because I, like I said, I do like Maria. I, you know, and I hope that maybe this is a lesson to her that it's okay to be open and vulnerable. And go ahead. Did you feel like Joey was trying to get out of going to her parents' house at all? Because I felt like when they were sitting on that bench and they were talking about what happened the week prior, and he's like, I really got to be sure before I go to your parents' house, you know, your, see your dad and everything. Like, I just felt like he was almost like, gonna call it then like well, i was like i had a i was like ooh, ooh. i feel like he was unsure because she was unsure going okay. back to what happened in the previous episode and he's thinking well i don't want to waste my time going to your parents house if you're not feeling the way about me that i am about you and i think that was kind of the reservation especially coming from a guy's perspective if a girl that i'm dating says i've never brought a guy home in my life that's obviously a huge deal. So if you're not feeling the same way that I am about you, then why are we going home to meet your parents? So I think like that was kind of the hesitation from that point of view. And if we skip ahead now, we've got this great conversation with Jesse Palmer coming up, which we can't wait to get to. But if we skip ahead to the rose ceremony, uh, everybody's lined up in the I love the airplane hangar backdrop, <laughs> by the way, which we need to have Gina. That's her new Zoom backdrop for next week. <laughs> I'm gonna, the airplane I'm hangar. It. Yeah, it. let's do it. Uh, you know, Maria pulls him aside before the start of the rose ceremony. But let me ask you, ladies, I think Joey's mind was already made up. I think there was no going back at that point, no matter what she said. If I was Maria, how could you not read his face when you're back there? I would have had to say, you didn't. You, did you make up your mind? Are you sure at this point? Is it not me? I wouldn't want to go back there and then have to leave. Like, that is just awful. Well, it was almost like uh, she took Daisy's uh, dad's advice. She shot her shot there, Gina, but it was basically too late at that point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you know what? That happens, And but she, she said it, that she would have regretted never actually saying the words, even though, and she said, too, in that little, you know, one-on-one -on -one conversation that, even though, you know, no matter what happens tonight, I would have regretted not saying it. So yeah. I get it. Um, but I think that once again, we saw the mask. She came back and she was kind of smiley as if like, oh, yeah, I just did this. Um, but I think that was an absolute mask. Like, I think she knew. Like, if you, if you couldn't read his face, like, because he just couldn't say a word and right. didn't say a word and just kind of was like, okay, thanks. And she walked away like... I don't know that I would have been able to be smiling as I got back into my spot next to the other girls who I knew were now going to be going into the next. And I didn't like Rachel saying, what did you talk to him about? It's, it's yeah. almost like, that's none of your business. Like the claws kind of came out there from Rachel for a hot second where you don't normally see no. when, yeah, when, when they pull a bachelor bachelorette aside for some private time and they go back to the rose ceremony, you never see a fellow contestant, if you will, be like, what did you talk about? I mean, that was very aggressive. I thought Maria I think had it was a pretty Rachel good answer. The last time too. Oh, was I think it? it was Rachel the last time too, that, uh, the, where she said, Oh wait, we, why do you need, why do I thought he wasn't going to have time? Right. He pulled Maria. But, but that was more, Sorry. she was like speaking out loud, not to that person directly. And she basically yeah. confronted Maria about it. Yeah, she, I thought that was very interesting. She put her right on the spot and yeah. I thought Maria's answer was good. I yeah. thought she said, you know, I'll tell you sometime, but not right now. <laughs> not right now. So Daisy got the first rose. No surprise. Kelsey got the second rose. No surprise. But then it's Rachel over Maria. So those are the final three heading to Mexico next week as we get closer and closer to seeing who wins episode 28 of The Bachelor. Oh, the drama. You can cut it with a knife. And we know one guy who's loving that, the host himself, Jesse Palmer, who's kind enough to join us here on Playing the Field, a Bachelor podcast. And for that conversation, back to L.A. we go and talk to Gina, who's standing by with the man of the hour, Gina. Thank you so much, Ryan. Jesse Palmer. It's great seeing you, Jen. Good to see you, too. I feel like I haven't seen you in a long time, so I'm really happy to have you here in person. For our first episode, we had Joey, mm -hmm. and he was with Ryan and Jen in New York, and I was home and very jealous that I was nowhere near <laughs> any of them. So now... You got a downgrade with me. But, yeah. you know, at least, <laughs> no. just, Major upgrade. You know, I've had to do this many times. Yes. I know. So I'll try to, you know, I'll, I'll try to live up to Joey's level and standard. We've got it. I think we I think we've got it. Let's dive right in because we just saw the hometowns and they're never without drama, of course, as we all know. Um, and this one was no different, especially at the end there. So tell me about we saw Maria go home. 
things were emotional. Talk to me about what you saw, I guess, and what Joe, like maybe what you talked to Joey about afterwards. Just tell me a little bit about. Well, you know, I, I think a, a big storyline, obviously, through hometowns is everything that happens between Joey and Maria. Um, I think th we've seen now for a few weeks um, this thing starting to simmer a little bit. I don't think anybody denies the attraction between Joey and Marina, but there are some hur hurdles. There's some feelings of insecurity that have started to come up um, on Maria's side. We saw her talk a lot, a little bit more about that in Jasper. I know Joey was really excited to go back to Canada and meet Maria's family, because I think sometimes when you meet someone's family, you get a better understanding of who they are and why they are the way they are. Uh, it gives you a, a greater level of appreciation and understanding. I think at the end of the day, Joey felt like he was further along in his relationships with Rachel, with Kelsey, and with Daisy. I know it was not an easy decision for him. I know talking to him at the hangar after Marie had left, uh, he was a bit down. That's always a very weird night. Um, I, I know having been there myself, because on one end, you're, you've just met these families. You're really excited about taking the next step now. Um, and traveling somewhere exotic with three incredible women, but on the same at the same time, um, someone's heart is broken. You also know in the back of your mind that you're you're disappointing someone's family. You just literally met them, and and they're hoping that things going to work out. So um, that that's always one of the I think sharper emotional roller coasters that, that we see throughout the season. I think certainly that was the case for Joey. And Jesse, I think I can speak for all of us. We were shocked at that result to see Maria go home. Does this qualify as your biggest surprise of the season? And if not, what was the biggest shock, the biggest surprise in your mind to this point? Uh, I think to this point now, I would say it's probably the biggest surprise. I, I, I know talking to fans in Bachelor Nation, um, you know, throughout all of this, there are many people that that either thought Marie was going to go the distance um, or certainly would at least make it um, all the way to the end. Um, and I think this probably surprised Joey and Maria too. I, I think if they, if, if you were talking to them and asked them about it, I think they would tell you that it probably surprised them equally as much. I, I don't know if, um, if, if any of us sort of on the other side of the camera saw that coming either. So, Jesse, was there anything in that date in particular that you thought led to the demise or it just sort of was the emotions weren't there, they weren't as strong, but was there anything that stood out to you? And like you said, you were surprised that it fell apart so quickly? I think ultimately, I think it was the culmination of, of in sort of their relationship, I think, ran its course. Um, I think there were there were trust issues as to whether or not the other person could get there. And I think that was something that both Joey and Marina had been talking about for some time. Um, I don't think Joey had the same concerns with the other women, which is why he felt more comfortable moving, moving on. I think personally myself, I just felt like they would get over it. They would find a way earlier in the process to be able to, to get past that hurdle because early on their date in Montreal, um, I mean, it looked like it was 100 miles an hour, full steam ahead between the two of them. And all of a sudden in Jasper, it, the road gets rocky um, and they just weren't able to, I think, catch up to the to the other three relationships. If at one point, I think it was in Jasper where he said to her, like, you're all over the place, woman. And I felt like, especially toward the end, that was really true that we did see them like she just couldn't she is very impulsive. She couldn't kind of like get around her emotions. Do you think that, I mean, well, there's, there's word there's, you know, we keep hearing it out there, you know, from bachelor nation talking about her being a you know, a possible for the bachelorette. Yeah. Do you think that would be, what do you think about that? And do you think that would, I, I think, her? I think Maria is certainly a great candidate. Um, listen, I, I think when, when she was in Jasper and I think the motions that she was experiencing, I think, I don't think she's the first woman or guy on the yeah. show to feel that. I, I think for her specifically, her feelings for Joey be, were, were real. I think she started realizing that and acknowledging that. And I think, you know, at that moment she got scared seeing Joey's connection with some of these other women as well. And I think it, it, it it's natural for her to want to take a step back 
and build walls. Joey, in a lot of ways, is the same. He's talked a lot about his insecurities and his past relationships, what happened with him and Charity as well. Yeah. Um, and, he, and you know, we saw him get pretty emotional in Canada talking about how he felt himself holding back at the yeah. same time. You know, I, I think Joey saw an entire spectrum of, of emotion from Maria literally in about 27 minutes and 12 <laughs> seconds. And I, think, yeah. I, I, think, I think for him, he was just so caught off guard because, mm -hmm. you know, my expectation was, was they were going to get over it. I think Joey's expectation was, was that they were going to, they were going to get over it much sooner th than they did as well. Well, if anybody can relate to what he's going through, it's you, my friend. Hard to believe you were The Bachelor 20 years ago. I had to do a double take when I saw that way back in season five, 2004. Uh, how much uh, do you kind of relate to what he's going through and how much do you enjoy as the host being someone who can provide advice or maybe be a shoulder to cry on for some of these women as they leave the show? It's been an incredible experience for me. It, it is a it is a full circle moment. There's no <laughs> doubt. I mean, my season was on like VHS. So that's, that's <laughs> how old mine was. But even though even though the, you know the video quality is not as clear and precise, <laughs> I can relate a little bit to the emotional roller coaster into the spectrum and range of of emotions that I think one potentially feels in their journey. The thing I'm always really trying to stay cognizant of and, and be thinking about and aware of is the fact that everybody's journey is very, very different. And just because I was the bachelor doesn't mean that the things I experienced are the things that Joey is experiencing too. So um, I really try to be present. I try to, you wear so many different hats. I've learned doing this job. Sometimes you're a confidant. Sometimes you're an advisor. Sometimes you're a cheerleader. Sometimes you're a shoulder to cry on. And you just sort of play the role required and necessary in that moment. And I, I don't interject. I don't insert myself when I'm not asked for or potentially needed. I'm always there. It's like you're a doctor or a surgeon on call. <laughs> you know, 20 years ago, we would have had a pager. You don't have that now. But it's like, but that's sort of, that's kind of kind of the role and just always being there for him in, in, any, in any way necessary what he requires and so that that's been it, it really was an honor being alongside joey for this um because it's been quite a ride up to this point um and i cannot wait for people to see how this whole thing is going to end because i think it's something that we've never seen before um on, in the history of the show Oh my gosh, it's going to be really emotional. And you've done such a great job being there for Joey, and you guys have developed such a nice friendship. Has your tennis game improved <laughs> as a result of your time with Joey? No, I got to be honest. One of the best things about this season was that I'm getting free tennis lessons. <laughs> I'm getting to play around the world, and my backhand slice is definitely improved. So, if anything else, um, you know, I've got that going for me. And, you know, it, it was funny. Um, Sometimes when you're trying to connect with someone and you're having conversations off camera, on camera, it happens in a setting like this. Yeah. With Joey, the easiest way to connect with him was actually on the tennis court. And I think that's why we're showing so much of that footage, um, because a lot of our conversation just felt so natural and organic. Uh, I never I, well, I literally just thought I was going to get to go play tennis with Joey. <laughs> you know, we'd hang out and Joey and I have had dinners and, and we hang out, we, we grab a drink whenever we can and just sort of catch up away from the cameras. But those tennis matches, ironically, those lessons <laughs> were actually uh, some of the best, some of the best moments for us, and, and I, hopefully that that came through on the show. Little therapy session, yeah, yeah, exactly for both of us. Let's <laughs> say my game. Oh my god, I love that. I love the fact that that's the way it is. Talk to me about Joey and just your overall thoughts as of him as the Bachelor. He, I mean, Bachelor Nation loves him. Talk to me about how you think he's handled everything and the things that are to come. Yeah, it, it, I, I do agree. I, I think I think Bachelor Nation loves him. Um, it, and it, it's it's easy to see why, obviously. He's very handsome. He's sweet. He's charming. He's sincere. He's compassionate. Um, I think the secret sauce to Joey, though, is I think he's let Bachelor Nation in. I think he's let viewers at home in. And we were talking a little bit about it earlier. He's, he's talked a lot before about some of his own insecurities. I think he's very self-aware of of his own imperfections. Yeah. Um, and he's been okay talking about that and being emotional about that. And I think for people at home watching, I think it, in, in an interesting way, it just makes him a little bit more relatable, I think. 
Yeah. I think as we look at Joey from the outside, like if Joey walked in here right now and you both have met him back in New York, like he's a handsome dude. He carries himself the way he comports himself. If you looked at him from across the street, you'd say that guy doesn't have a care or a problem in the world. He's right. perfect. Mm -hmm. um, but but Joey's Joey's a real guy, yeah. just like just like I am, just like everybody in this building is. And he's OK being that. Um, being with him is a trip. It, I, you know, I've heard it on Bachelor Nation. I've, I've seen it online. People call it Joey Mania. And I, I do agree. I think it's a thing. Like, I've been with the guy out walking around. And you're with, it's like you're with a Jonas brother. <laughs> People are screaming his name. And they're like, they're, they're, they're grabbing photos. And they're making them give, give shout outs to, to their moms and their families. I mean, he is... He's the real deal. The name fits. He's yeah, Joe. You that's know. right. It's like he's the real deal. But I, he's been, um, you know, I know people were really hopeful when he got named the bachelor. It was the first time since I've been hosting, by the way, that the lead was a unanimous decision across the board. It was the one person everybody wanted to be the lead, um, and he's just been himself. And because of that, I, I just think people love him even more. He is the average Joe no pun intended, but so much more than the average Joe, too. And I think that's kind of the depth uh, you, that you see from him this season, really one of my favorite parts. But I think my single most favorite part was you in the raft with the bucket of KFC in the outtakes <laughs> saying, yeah. of course there's only one rose left. Why do I have to say this is the final rose tonight? And I've been wondering that since day one watching the show. Why do we have to say that the camera shows that there's one rose left? <laughs> I think about it every week when I walk <laughs> in the room. I mean, that was literally deep thoughts with, with Jesse Palmer in the raft with my tie on. I'm just like, it is so true. It's like you're walking in there and like, it, it, it's the worst feeling walking into that room at that moment because you can cut the tension with the knife. Sure. It is glaringly obvious what's going on. And it's just like to add one more level of tension. I walk in. I know that it, dri it drives the women nuts. I know it kills Joey. You know, he's looking at me like he, he's trying to be nice. He's like, thanks, Jesse. It's like Captain Obvious shows it again to tell everybody what we already know. So anyway, so I was, you know, th that's just a little idea of what's going on in my head every, every week that we do this. As you're going through this season, are you, do you ever think, oh boy, that is going to be a great contestant for Paradise? And if so, <laughs> do you have any uh, in mind already that you would just love to see on the beach? From the, uh, from the cast this yes. year? Yes. Oh, man. Oh, where, where could I start? Well, you know, <laughs> Maria, I think, would be amazing on the beach. <laughs> for sure. For sure. Yeah. Um, I thought Lexi, I think Lexi would be great as well. And we were talking earlier about surprises. Mm -hmm. Maria going home, the biggest surprise. I think Lexi leaving in Montreal was a shocker yeah. uh, to me as well. And uh, she has an amazing story. Um, she was very open about that with Joey. Um, and I would love to see for Lexi to find her person, um, get married, have kids, have the family she so desperately wants. And who knows, you know, the, the beach very well may be the, the place for that to happen. Yeah. Yeah. I love, she was one of my, one of my, my early on, like, I was like, oh yeah, she could be great. Yeah. I it, yeah. But you, Mr. Jesse Palmer, speaking of family, <laughs> <laughs> you are a new dad. You have 18,000 jobs. You have, we're seeing you here. Thank you for being here in LA. Of course. How do you even, I mean, you're traveling all over. How do you even do it all? I have to ask. Are you Number one, I have the most amazing wife. Like Emily yeah. is so understanding and I think she, she gets it. She understands uh, what's required and she is so supportive. If I didn't have Emily, this absolutely would not happen. <laughs> but really for me, it's like a quarterback mindset. So I, I used to play quarterback and <laughs> you know, the, what, what coaches are always telling you is play the next play. Don't don't think about what's going to happen in the fourth quarter in a two minute situation. Don't worry about an interception you threw earlier. Play the next play, and it's kind of like that uh, in work. I think if you look at the calendar and you step back and you look at the next thirty days, you you, you have like an outer body experience. Like it's it's shocking, but when you look at some of the stuff, it it, it it's anxiety inducing. I'm already getting anxiety. I haven't even looked at it. I think if you just play the next play, that's the important thing. So for me, it's like literally do this, go home, change a diaper, 
swaddle, <laughs> you know, bottle feed four ounces of, of breast milk and just try to, you know, put get the baby swaddled. And then it's just that whatever the next play is, that's what you got to do. So that, that, that's what I try to do at least. Your swaddling skills are good? No. <laughs> I, I, okay. I got to say, I, you know, if you had asked me before having a baby, if you had said, what are you going to be good at? What are you going to be bad at? I would have said, I'll be an amazing swaddler, terrible diaper change. And it's actually the complete reverse. <laughs> I I'm love it. Amazing I love it. diaper changing, blowouts, everything, um, <laughs> swaddling, zero shot. When you're in the when you're in the hospital, mm -hmm. and the nurses are doing it for you, they make it look so easy. And they do it in like it's like a burrito. They make they do it in like three seconds. And I'm sitting there and I'm like I'm just disconnect. Everything's falling apart. <laughs> the crib's the crib's crumbling. So I've I know my role. I know where my strengths are, and Emily's Emily's helping me a lot along the way. And you got a team player in Emily as well, so that's great. Exactly. Well, I am so happy that you made time in your anxiety-inducing schedule to come join me here in LA um, to to chat Bachelor and to be on playing the field. Thank you so yeah, much. I, I always love chatting with you. So thanks so much for, for making the time for me. You guys as well back in New York. Hopefully we can do it in person soon. Look forward to it, Jess. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, guys. That was a great conversation. Loved his answer about, of course I don't need to say that there's the one final rose left <laughs> as he's sitting there with his tub of Kentucky Fried Chicken. I love that. He's saying what we all think, you know, yeah. and confirming it. It's great. And it's so <laughs> it's so great to see how happy he is, even in his own personal life, yeah. you know, is a great, great to see. I couldn't believe it was 20 years ago, Gina, that he was The Bachelor. When I looked that up, I was like, wow, I can't believe that much time had passed. I know. And look at how his life has changed. And yeah. here he is like, you, you know, who says you can't go home again? He's at the bachelor mansion now, you know, all the time. I have talked to Jesse several times uh, since he took over as host and since I've been on this beat. Um, and he's always so much fun to talk to. So candid um, and just always a great guest, always a great chat. And you know what? I hope he didn't get paid full for this last episode because he came in and said two <laughs> lines in the airplane hangar and he was not even in the entire episode. And then he came in to say his one line about the final rose and then uh, told Marie to take her time saying her goodbyes. So I was like, oh, a cameo. A cameo, <laughs> a cameo by the host of the show, Jesse to Palmer. To be fair, this is why we need him to say this is your final rose tonight. There you go. Otherwise, he wouldn't have been in the episode. Jesse. Yeah, exactly, he would have exactly. been shut out altogether. We don't want that. Well, obviously, he'll be a big part of next week's episode as well in Mexico. Let's go ahead and show you what's coming up. We are in Tulum, Mexico, and I am falling in love with every woman that is here. Oh, my God, there's a stingray right under us. <laughs> love is a leap of faith. And let me tell you, I feel like I'm about to take the biggest leap. Woo! This week is Potential Fantasy Suites. And I hope by the end of this, I feel everything I need to to be able to get down on one knee and know it's my person. I'm falling in love with you fully. I've felt it for a while. I am falling in love with him. It's a wonderful yeah. feeling to love. Intimacy for men is different than it is for women. Okay. I have been in your shoes. Yeah. I didn't get chosen, mm -hmm. and that was hard. Always have something in the back of your head that you might not be it. She said that she's OK. I can tell that she's not. There's still two other women, so I could literally, you know, get my heart broken. I can't see because I know that you're okay. having a time with someone else. <laughs> I am definitely terrified that maybe me opening up, it's too late. I have this feeling deep down inside once I show every part of myself, people don't fall in love with me. It says we need to talk. I don't understand what this is. This is like my worst nightmare. This would derail everything. Before we go, one guess. Who do you think writes the note, says we need to talk? I am going to say Maria comes back. Dun, dun, dun. Wouldn't that be a twist? Everybody, there's always one. Correct me if I'm wrong. Somebody comes back every yes. season. Yes, someone so always We haven't had back. a comeback yet. Lexi? Lexi? Lexi could be a dark horse, too, because she was a fan favorite when she left. I liked her. And maybe she's re <laughs> reconsidering. Gina, your guess. Well, originally, as you recall, my guess was that it was Leia. But yes. I don't think that's even a possibility right now. I just I don't. Um, My guess is it could be Rachel. In this 
you know, if in this tease, we saw her and him kind of crying. So I don't know. Maybe they oh. maybe they had a moment. Maybe, maybe they had a moment without. I don't know. And the best part is not only do we all get to find out together, we get to talk about it next week on Playing the Field, a Bachelor podcast. Another fun episode, ladies. Thanks for being here. Anytime. Yeah. <laughs> we look forward to seeing what happens. We're down to the final three. We'll talk about it next week on Playing the Field, a Bachelor podcast. We will see you then. <laughs>